briefly these two functions in 4.7 and 4.8, the logistic growth uh, model as well as the search function, which you'll see in the next video. Uh, we briefly mentioned them, but we didn't really go into um, actually looking at what all the different pieces are. So let's say that I have a population. Okay, so here we're looking at a table from the population of the U.S. from 1790 to 2000. And if I only look at the growth, so I actually graph the actual population growth, right away it kind of looks very exponential. As I continue to go out further and further, what happens is that exponential starts to turn and it no longer looks exponential because what's happening is it has an exponential growth right away and then it starts to slow down. The rate of growth begins to decrease. And this is our logistic function, All right? So if you have data that looks like this model, meaning it starts to grow very quickly and then it starts to turn a little bit, then this is your logistic function. This is the format of what it looks like. And now let's actually look at the formula. So here for positive con constants, L, C, and K, a logistic function has this form. So you're going to know what it looks like, right? You're going to have one number up top, and then on the bottom you can see where the um, exponential part is. It's increasing everywhere, so it's always increasing. It's concave up, and then it turns to concave down. Remember what that point's called? Inflection point. And then as it starts to slow down the rate, it reaches what's called the carrying capacity. So if you're asked what the carrying capacity, all you have to do is look at that value. What's nice about this is how did we find inflection points? We took the second derivative, all that good stuff. They've already done this for you. So the inflection point is simply going to be uh, whatever your carrying capacity is divided by two. And they've called this the point of diminishing returns. This is actually used a lot in business where you advertise a product and it's really your marketing's doing well, shooting off, starts to slow down. So we back away on the advertisement. So this point of diminishing returns is where your slope is the steepest. So it's where, let's say, going back to the last example, this is a population. This would be where your population is increasing the fastest. We can look at different values of our carrying capacity and we can see what happens here is, well, you're going to reach carrying capacity faster if your carrying capacity is a smaller value. Certainly, we look at our concave up where our concavity changes, our inflection point, then it turns to concave down and hits our carrying capacity. If the value of K, which we call this our growth rate, notice that if it's small, it's just taking longer to grow. If it's large, a large growth rate makes sense. It's growing very quickly. And so we would reach our carrying capacity a lot faster. All right, so for example, it says if T is in years since 1990, one model for the population of the world, P in billions is modeled, looks like this. Right away, you should say, oh, that's a logistic growth function because I can see a number at the top, the E to the negative KT on the bottom. What does the model predict for the maximum sustainable population of the world? You should be able to answer that just by looking at this. It's the carrying capacity. So that would be our maximum sustainable population, and this is in billions, so 40 billion. According to the model, when will the Earth's population reach 39.9 billion? Well, we set this equal to 39.9, and then we go through the algebra and solve this. What I would do right now, get a pencil and paper and try to solve this on your own. If you need to keep hitting pause and just see one step at a time. Otherwise, if you just sit and watch me do it and say, yeah, that looks great, Cindy, you won't be able to do it on the test. So what I did first is I multiplied both sides by the denominator. I really just kind of switched so then the 39.9 comes over here. So I multiplied the denominator on both sides, divided both sides by 39.9. I just kind of did all that in one step. And then from here, I subtract one on both sides. Then next I divide by 11 and you could go ahead and get a number up here in the numerator. 
And then now I, this whole piece over here, I throw in my calculator and I get this. Hopefully you remember when you have E raised to something, E is base LN. So you would LN both sides and that brings the exponent down. Please do not forget to LN the right hand side. And then I get my answer. So you should be able to go through all these algebra steps and you're going to see they're going to be the same for every one when you set the equation equal to a particular value and then interpret it your results. It said if T is in years since 1990, then we would expect it to reach 39.9 billion in the year 2095. Another example, this is a homework question about the Mayan Indians. It says the proportion P, so a proportion, we know what that is a fraction, a percentage, a decimal, all that means same thing, of land in use of farming, T years after 1935 is modeled by the logistic function. What proportion of the land was use in farming in 1935? T years after 1935. So we simply would just plug in a zero because 1935 would be zero years after 1935. And we'd get our answer that 25% or 0.25 would be the proportion of land in use for farming in 1935. What is the long run prediction? Remember carrying capacity, what, which makes sense. The proportion in the long run, we would hope that they're using 100% of their land. When was half the land in use for farming? Well, you could set this equal to 0 0.5. And remember that last slide, all of those steps that I went through, you should be able to go through all those steps and get this answer. Also, if I graph this, notice when half the land was in use for farming, half, I can see it on my graph. When is the proportion of land used for farming increasing most rapidly? The carrying capacity L divided by two, so notice that's actually the one half is um, we get X equals 40. So 40 years later, we get 1975. All right. So the logistic growth function, you see this a lot with populations. This is a good other example with um, farming land, but typically it has to do with it's a population growth function. All right, and then the next lecture, we will do the search function, which is our drug concentration curve.